this is going to be a full transmission disassemble. Everything that is in the transmission is going to be disassembled today, so let's go ahead and start. This is about all you're going to need. You're going to need some kind of pry bar or something to get the uh, nuts off. You're going to need a holding tool uh, and then a torque wrench. You're going to need a torque wrench to put everything back together. It's an 8 millimeter. If it doesn't want to come off, you don't want to pull on one side. You want to try to give a tug here. You can see I got my hand around it and try to pull it off. If uh, you haven't opened it up in a long time, it's going to be very difficult. Alright, now you get the cover off. Let's block this guy. This is the holding tool you can get. They're all the same for these long cases. And you want to take two of your screws and basically you just do this. Once you get it started by hand, you can just snug it with this. Just snug, nothing more. There. And now that's not moving anywhere. What you're going to need. 17 for the crankshaft. This is just an old torque wrench that I use as a uh, big old pry bar. No impact gun needed as long as you have this one. Put it in and then you uh, line it up. Just apply some gentle pressure. Keep her going. There you go. You feel a give. Just finish it out like that. This whole thing should come off pretty easily. Now it's time for this side. It's a 14 millimeter. Stop this, you can, some people block the rear wheel, but what I always like to do, this is a, this is a variator blocking tool for a 150 cc long case, but they work perfectly on clutches. You get it in there kind of well, and then just to loosen it, you don't even need to pry it up against anything. You can just get in there like this, and then you kind of just, push on it, get the angle just right, which sometimes can take a while, and then there you go. Now you got some pressure, so you just, and it comes off. The reason you can do this is because this torque spec for this one is this rear bolt, 40 newton meters. This one doesn't need that much torque, and that's why this nut is comparatively small. You just go ahead and pull. This belt won't come. You can give it a little bit of, you know, you can tug it both ways, but should come right off. Just take this bad boy off, which is the, this is your clutch to take your actual variator off. Just be careful, make sure you grab the back side of it because it can be finicky at times. And that's basically your whole transmission gone. Here are your two parts. You got your clutch and your variator. We're going to be working on both today. If you take a look at the variator, you want to do an inspection on it. Well, you got to make sure that this is fine. Here's your rollers. Your rollers are in here like this. Um, and the most important thing is that this thing is not grinding or scratching. It needs to be pretty smooth. Never clean this out with carb cleaner or brake cleaner because you'll ruin the smoothness like this. So let's pop out our roller weights. So these are our 5 gram rollers. Here's our mix. The black ones are 3 grams and these ones are 4 grams. They've already been used and you want to check them for flat spots but these ones look basically fine. Installation is really quite simple. You want to space them out so that two of the same kind are not right next to each other. So let's put in the three grams. Put a three gram right there. Put a three gram up here. And a three gram right there. Now it's time for the four grams. One goes right here. Just like that, you've got 3.5 grams. Now we're going to be doing a clutch disassembly because not only do we want to swap the clutch, we want to, uh, well, as you can see here, I've got a bunch of clutch parts and some need to be taken out and put back in. Most notably the spring. We're going to be going back to this spring, which is basically what it came with, the stock spring. As you can see in there, we have some kind of, uh, you know, more 
high tension spring, which is not really working out for us. So in order to mess with this, you're gonna need this, which is like a one and a half size socket, which needs a bunch of inverters to work properly, but you can just plug it right into your, any old impact gun will do. Now, here's where you gotta be real careful. This thing is under tension. So when you remove the nut, this will fly out. This is why what most people do is they use this, a mixture of this. Just go slowly and go carefully. All right, so see now it's starting to come off. So some people just hold it down like this and they do that, but it can slip out. I've seen that slip out plenty of times. So this is, uh, even though I'm only wearing flip-flops here, this is arguably better. Hands, now it's completely off. So that whole thing is uh, under tension. So you just gotta be very, very careful. And here you go. All right, well, basically we're left with a couple parts. You know, this part of the clutch, the clutch bell, I think, just comes off. This is the nut. This is the actual, well, gosh, let's see. This has the pads. I'm not really familiar with the terminology, but we're going to be changing this one for this one right here, which is basically the same thing. Now, here's the actual spring. Yeah, you know, it's just this, this tight spring didn't really do it for me. We're going to be switching it out with uh, the spring right here. The most important part of the clutch is, I guess this is what they call a torque driver. Well, you know, you should be hearing what sounds like weird noise is coming from this when you turn it because there's actually a bunch of goop and lube that are in these ramps. You should be feeling a little bit of resistance. What you don't want to feel is like a grinding feeling or something like that. After doing this a couple times, this is kind of like what it would do if it's warming up, you know, and your clutch is warming up on you and... See, so now it's already... Now to reassemble it, it's very simple. You just take your torque driver and then make ring holder right here that you would fit in right there. We take this one, put it in like this, have your impact gun ready. This massive socket. There's a couple different ways to do this, but you should be able to just tension this by hand and then just hold down one side of it. You're basically jamming it. Be careful, you know, you don't want to take a finger off or anything. Get it started a little bit. And once you have it started, I try to come in with this one. Okay. What you want to make sure is that you're not tightening it weird. Just gently keep her going. Keep going until you feel like it really doesn't want to go anymore. There, that's enough, right? So, there you go. Now your clutch is back together. An honorable shout out to the belt, as there's always going to be measurements on your belt, and one of these measurements, which I think is a 17.5, is, is how wide the belt is. So, you know, that's where your wear is going to be, so I actually just measured this belt out, but you just want to bring a tape measure to this and make sure that your measurements are still in spec just visually look at the belt. It's fine if it looks weird like this, that's because when it sits, it stretches, but I just replaced it not too long ago. It's reassembling time. Good old variator, you just pop it off over here. Like this, the belt part can sometimes be tricky. Put it on the, the rear axle like this. Now, the idea is you wanna get that belt right in there in the middle, and then open it, and then stuff that belt so that you keep this open. That way it'll give you room to work around with. Do something like that. Yep, now that's in there pretty good. Pretty good. Get this back on, the axle. Now you see how this can easily go over? And we're gonna want it even a little bit more so you can squeeze a bit more. That's it, look at all this extra room. That's how those people on YouTube do it. They get all that extra room for the belt. Look at that fan and all that, all this whole contraption right here. Bring it in, make sure those gears fit in there. And feel behind there with my two hands that the belt is not you don't want to tighten against the belt. Just finger tighten this for now. Make sure you don't cross thread it. All right. Just take this little babby one right here and hand tighten it for now. Just like that. So this is just a basic torque wrench from Harbor Freight. Literally the cheapest one, as long as you know that they can get sockets that are 14 and 17. You want to start with your crankshaft. It's 60 newton meters, and that's around 44 foot-pounds. Tighten this up here, 41, 42, 43. You know, that's that's probably going to be fine. You got to get up here. This is 20, 30, 40, and just give it like 42. I know it's kind of blurry, but that's just adjusting it. Come in with your 17, and you got your torque wrench. You come in here, and you get down right there, and then you just want to start gradually now. 
the most important thing, like I said, you got your two fingers, you want to make sure going behind here, going behind the belt, that this belt is not, you can see it's not tightening up against the variator at all. If you do that, terrible experience. Just don't do it. So you just keep going. You see I'm going real gentle right here. I'm not doing too much. You know. Yeah. Keep her going, keep her going. There you go. Let's just double check. The whole bike's tilting. Yeah, so we're fine. Now, moving to the back here, I know that the torque setting is a 40 newton meters. 40 is like, oh gosh, you know, like 28 or something. I know it's blurry, I know you can't see anything, but it's just, you know, the torque wrench. That's 20 right there, and then you want to go to like 28. Here's where things get interesting, because there's not really any way to, uh, like I said, the rear wheel, you know, will spin. If you try to tighten this, you can see the rear wheel is spinning. So what I do is I take this thing, put it in here like this, and then look what it's resting up against the bend it. You're not really bending much. these little gears right here, you're not really going to bend them with this amount of force and you're not hammering on it, you're going very gently and this is only 40 newton meters, it's, it's really not that much so this is just the shade tree mechanic way of doing it. Take your torque wrench and get, just go real gentle, you know. You're basically pushing the bendix up against these little gears right here and yeah if you were to put you know 60 newton meters or more that would be a lot of force but 20 I mean, that's, that's nothing. Be gentle, because this whole thing could pop up and, you know. There. And you see this little Bendix was not damaged at all. It's fine. It's fine. I don't want anyone in the comments telling me otherwise. I'm just kidding. But anyways, always remember to loosen your torque wrench completely. You, know, you don't store it with a stiff spring, or else that's how you're going to wear it out faster. Well, would you look at that? You're basically almost done. You want to take off these two. You don't want to leave this in here, of course. Put it all back together, making sure to not jam anything. Make sure your starter's in there good. Tighten it, just make it snug with the impact. go in there and you know torque settings for this you just want to make sure it's snug enough to where it's not going to fall off so there you go all done